Now that Jonathan Kent has found himself in the world of injustice, how will he react to this strange new order brought about by its Superman? Well, let's hop into the pages of Adventures of Superman, John Kent issue number three, and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up from where the last issue had left off, Injustice Superman had killed Ultraman and saved John from getting murdered himself. Wonder Woman is suspicious of the kid and the effect that he could very well have on this world Superman. But Injustice Supes is just so plain overjoyed at the idea of being reunited with the child that he lost. And now he's kind of sort of just throwing caution to the wind. When John eventually comes to, he's shocked to find that it's Lex Luthor who's actively trying to heal him now instead of hurt him for a change. In Justice, Lex also has some medical insight into why John passed out during the battle in the last issue. He says John is learning to harness and filter solar energy in new and interesting ways never before thought possible. The book never comes out and gives an actual reason, but I always assumed John was able to do this stuff because of his dual human heritage. Hell, with proper training and focusing, being able to manipulate bioelectricity could very well just be the beginning of a whole new world of power for John. Of course, these new powers end up being a double-edged sword and one he just can't pull out willy-nilly without completely exhausting himself and leaving himself very, very vulnerable because, you know, these powers always need to have a catch. John doesn't have much time to let any of this soak in as it's at that very moment an alarm ends up going off warning of an attack in Gotham City. John is told to stay back by Superman and the others, but the second he hears that Damien is involved, well, he comes a-running because John is a good friend and never leaves anyone in the lurch. Of course, little does our young Superman know that this world's Damien is a far cry from the former super son that John is familiar with. For starters, our young Superman is shocked and appalled to see Damien openly attack his father Batman, and really, that was more than enough proof to communicate to John that something is very, very wrong at the heart of this world. And I mean, also, Damien's almost as tall as John in this world, too, so yeah, this has to be some sort of cracked mere nightmare realm. And just as Superman tries to play this all off as some sort of Bat family dysfunction, saying that Dick Grayson died by accident, and that Bruce blamed Robin for it, and that they've been fighting ever since. And that, you know, he really shouldn't try and look into any of this any deeper or ask any more follow-up questions. It's here that all the cracks in this world's facade begin to rapidly break down, and just as Superman tries to tell John that, oh sure, he may have broken some rules here and there, like killing Ultraman, but ultimately these were just decisions to make his world a better place to live. No longer did Superman see himself as some sort of outsider on Earth, one who didn't want to use his power for fear of being seen as a dictator, no, now he topples dictators and repairs the environment. This is all actually a really great bit of continuity because this conversation very directly harkens back to the talk that John and Clark had before Superman left for War World all the way back in the very first issue of the John series. And I mean, really, how sad is it to think that this version of John's dad actually took his advice only for it to maybe work out in the worst possible way imaginable? And that it was the death of this world's love Lois and John that actually spurred Injustice Superman down the path of corruption? It's from here John asked to be allowed to see the rest of the world for himself, and you know what? Injustice Superman surprisingly agrees, believing that his son will soon see the world as he does. It's Wonder Woman who ends up getting the line of the issue by essentially saying, hey dummy, he's not your son and you're not his father. John has to admit the air is cleaner on this earth and he doesn't hear screams or gunfire at all. However, when he stops to save a baby that fell from a balcony only to see the mother's look of absolute terror on her face at the sight of the super S, well, then it becomes quite clear what's going on here. People don't live in peace on Injustice Earth, they live in crippling fear of Superman and those like him. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to a close, everybody. And so that was Adventures of Superman, John Kent issue number three. And overall, I thought that this was an all right issue. I don't know what I was expecting from John Kent Superman taking a walking tour of Injustice Superman's Earth, but I guess I thought it would have a little bit more more punch than this. I mean, in fairness, this is still early in the story, and things are definitely probably going to heat up when John starts to seek out the Rebellion. It's also early in the Injustice timeline before things really started going to hell in a handbasket. And there's certainly something interesting from a character point of view of Injustice Superman being so sure of himself and his course of action that he just jumps to the conclusion that this multiversal version of his son will get in line like everyone else on his Earth has. I can also appreciate that Tom Taylor wanted to go with a more slower, deliberate tone for all the reveals in this story, but maybe it was just a bit too slow for its own good. Overall, I would give this
give this one a 7 out of 10. Certainly good, maybe not as good as the two issues that preceded it, but I am certainly interested to see how it's all going to shake out in the end. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.